Buckle up, sports fanatics. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast, your HQ for in-depth sports talk. Join host Kevin L. Warren and crew as they dissect the hottest stories, ignite debates, and bring you closer to the action. From locker room whispers to expert takes, we cover it all. It's game time, so strap in and grab a drink. The Sports Chasers Podcast starts right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's happening, everybody? I hope everybody's having a tremendous week, man. By the time you hear this, it should be on a Friday, man. It's just another edition of the Sports Chasers Podcast. Coming to you live and direct, man. Tonight, man, we have a special treat for you tonight, man. We have a great treat tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about something on not sports specifically. Well, it'll be sports. But we're tapping into the the mind, the psychology of sports, man. But before we do that, meet our special guest. Let's talk to the DA. DA, what's going on, brother? How are you tonight? Oh, man, we're good. We're good. Another day, another 15 cent. 15 cent, 14. not... Point. I got you, my brother. I got you, man. Uh, Tonight, man, let me just introduce our special guest tonight. Um, He is Jason Medley. Jason, he's a author. He's a hypnotist, and he's a performance mindset performance coach. I'm going to bring up his bio here in a second while I talk, but let me give him some, some applause while we get him in here tonight. Let me get my applause, my real applause. There you go. Jason, good night. Good good evening, I should say. Welcome to the Sports Chasers Podcast, man. What's going on tonight? How are you today, bro? I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, DA, how you doing? And Kevin, thanks for having me on. Um, just, um, you know, ready to talk some sports, ready to talk some, uh, you know, how athletes train, what, what brainwave state they're using. Uh, we can talk a little uh, hypnosis and the, the effects that has on you know, businessmen, um, you know, athletes, uh, your average everyday person, you know, people who are dealing with blockages. But I integrate all these things together um, and you work with different genres of people. But, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here and happy to share. Well, I'm glad you're here. And thanks for joining us. Because uh, This topic is very, very um, interesting to me. And I'm, I'm really looking to dive in on some of these topics because I, I want to get the correlation and maybe we can help some kids or some athletes reach out to you um, on the go forward that may have some of these blockages that we can um, kind of help um, remediate. So. Absolutely. So, so definitely. Let me, let me give Jason his just do. Let me um, a little short bio on his current focus. Jason, he's located currently in Houston, Texas. He's a renowned mindset performance coach. He's a quantum healing hypnotist level two and an energy healer with a vast knowledge of, various spiritual and personal growth techniques, his deep insight into human capacity and his genuine drive to uplift others has driven his commitment to helping business owners, athletes, and individuals excel as leaders. Medlock's Jason's tailored approach guarantees client success, fostering leadership qualities and enhancing both personal and professional prosperity. Jason barks on his life coaching and spiritual quest driven by his athletic um, experience and a multi facet business um, career. He's best he, his best seller empowered by consciousness along with other ebooks like the mental game plan, the mental game plan, a comp- a comprehensive guide and mental training for athletes and coaches, unlocking potential and finding freedom within reflect his path and wisdom, offering readers a powerful framework for self explanation and growth. And Jason has some other accolades, man, but he just wants to really currently focus on this tonight. Jason also used to play um, um, football at a very high level with um, with the university. I don't want to get it wrong because I don't want you to. So I'm gonna let you. you it was in Texas. Which yeah, one? Te- Texas A and M. I thought it was yeah, Johnny Manziel, Texas A and M. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't want to say the other Texas. And so, but right. Jason, again, welcome tonight, man. So let let's let's just dive into um, one of the one of the questions we want to ask you. You know, in your book, it says. You introduced the concept of mental training and uh, alongside physical training for athletes. Can you share uh, how athletes can begin um, integrating mental training with their daily routine? You know, one of the things that I think that athletes can do uh, when you integrate the mental with the physical is to set aside that time. If you're going to work on your back pedal, 
if you're going to, uh, you know, move into some bag drills or if you're, you know, uh, swimming three or four laps, I believe, and it's been proven that you set aside the same amount of time for goal setting, doing the actual session, uh, for being mindful during the actual session, uh, for, you know, breathing techniques and using those type of techniques during the actual session. So although you're there with the physical aspect of it, when you integrate uh, the mental portion of this uh, training, it really, really enhances uh, your overall well-being and it enhances your focus and your ability in training in certain areas. So you're able to you know, obviously, this is sort of foreign for some people. If you're a sports psychologist working with you, he's doing a lot of talk therapy, which is fine because I think talk therapy is great. But talk therapy only can take you so far. And a lot of therapists will tell you that. And that's why I think that when you use uh, holistic approaches, uh, helping a person move deeper within themselves, meditation. I mean, a lot of guys probably don't meditate right before they get ready to train. They just go stretch, warm up, and train. Sure. There are a lot of different techniques that you can use to really, really enhance your focus and really, really enhance um, the way you're going to train that day using visualization techniques. And I encourage athletes, visualize the way you want to train. Visualize you know, how the, what, what foot needs to go first when you're doing your, doing the boom, 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 uh, the NID in step when you're a wide receiver, you know, if you're on the bags and you're a linebacker and you punch in and you got to hit the breastplate in the right spot, visualization techniques, they are tremendous when you integrate them into the actual routine. And it's not going to take a long time, guys. This is, I'm not talking about something that's long, but it's something that you, have to meticulously move into your schedule, into your slot, even when you're in football practice. That's why the book is written for coaches and athletes, because coaches can learn how to integrate these uh, techniques as well to help these young men out. That's, that's really good. I'm sorry, Kev. No, go ahead. So what I wanted to ask was, right, because you, you know, you jumped right into my wheelhouse, right? So um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, and I think the answer I almost have is going to be one, um, and I'll explain is that what what point should an athlete, a young athlete, start to integrate this into their preparation? And the reason I ask that because I know when I was a kid playing ball, you know, at practice, it's all physical, right? Because you even get put on the team because you're physically faster, stronger, or bigger, right? So you're not really doing a mental rep while you're doing a physical rep, right? So when you're you're not thinking about your feet when you're eight, nine, 10 years old. At least I wasn't. Um, and maybe, you know, you played at a higher level. So maybe you were at nine, 10, 11 years old. But at what point in time should we get like the kids to say, OK, look, before we start, let's set some goals mentally as to where we want to go with this practice. What are we trying to get out of this? And of course, like you said, I think the coaches should be um, front and center um, as far as for each player or each position group to say, listen, this is what I want to see out of you guys today. You know, how can we get there? So what what do you what are your thoughts on that? Well well DA DA, I'm gonna uh man. Yeah, D, I'm going I'm going to um uh, mess with you a little bit because um <laughs> in Texas we start when we're five or six years old. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this is little league football. We 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 do a lot of things like that in, in Texas. So um I'm from New York City. I apologize. You know what I mean. So, yeah. so flag football starting at six years old. And but what I can, what I would say, you know, with the athletes, you know, you can start when they're around seven, eight, nine years old, only teaching them how to breathe when anxiety is building up, okay. when a young man is mad because he's not getting in the game. Um, you know, showing these guys, showing these little kids, you know, hey, just relax. And I want you to do something for me. I want you to start to breathe every time you are mad about something and then come talk to coach. Now we're subtly teaching them how to use breathing techniques uh, to calm themselves so that they can stay focused. Great. The same thing that a golfer may do when he has to hit a big putt. He has to try to get centered. But then yeah. you practice these breathing techniques daily. 
And now a, a lot of parents may say, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd rather have him with a coach training skill. That is skill. That is, yeah. that is teaching at that level. And you teach these young uh, uh, kids at the young a, at a young age. You got to teach the coaches first at a young age, moving all the way up into the high school, junior high, high school, college ranks, breathing, uh, being mindful. Mindful means looking at things that are around you, things it, the things that um, um, you know that that people don't notice, like. You know, the color of your tennis shoes, how the earth feels when it hits your arms, uh, the way uh, people speak to you, hearing the tone. Is it, is it a good vibration or is it a, a, a low vibration? Mindful, just just being aware of your surroundings. The more mindful uh, mindfulness uh, techniques we teach our young men, the more they are tuned in to their environment. And when you're tuned in at that level and you're taught at that at that age and you, you, you're improving, year after year, it helps you gain a, 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 a huge, huge advantage in focus um, and, and clarity. So right. breathing techniques, teaching mindfulness, also, and I so spoke about this too, help these young kids starting at an early age, seven, eight, nine, hey son, just visualize when I put you in, what foot are you going to stay with? My left foot. When you put, when we were calling this play, which way are you going to block? I'm going to block to the right, coach. I'm going to step left and I'm going to block right. I want you to stand over there. I want you to see this play. And to some extent, we do use these type of techniques. Our coaches don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to, I want, I want you to think about it. But it's really a visualization technique. If we build these small techniques in, Oh my God, it would be huge. Oh yeah. yeah I can see it now because you know, you know, like I said, unfortunately it wasn't born in Texas, but uh yeah, <laughs> I, I can no, I can know I can definitely see how it you know yes. would work, but you know, um and how it would help all the way through, not just in sports, but I think the kids would be able to take that into other aspects of their life. So yeah, I can definitely see where it would work, you know. Jason, let me, and, let me go ahead. no, go ahead, finish your thought. No, I was just going to say, D.A., and, uh, you know, in once a, a, a kid gets to high school, he should be able to control anxiety. He should be able to understand when I'm injured, not to separate myself from the team. And we're not saying not feel emotions. Right. We're saying that emotions, you can decide how you're going to handle them. And if you're trained to deal with um, you know, anxiety, or you're trained to deal with uh, blockages that may have happened, you know, when, when you were a little boy and, and constantly being yelled at and constantly, constantly being beat or constantly being in situations that young kids shouldn't be. We have to really understand. I'm not asking coaches to be therapists. Right. What I, what I am saying is that there are practical things we can do for the young man that you can't reach. And, and teach him how to be within himself. Teach him gratitude. And when you teach a young man gratitude, you're only teaching him to be grateful. Right. Yes. Be, be, right. be thankful for this. Be thankful for that. Love your teammate. It's all about team. That's gratitude. And there are some basic principles that you can help build a person's mindset from a young age all the way up until they're men. Gotcha. Let me let me ask you this, Jason. When did you start to get into this mindfulness thing? When did it click for you? When did you want it to um, explore and share it with others? When did when when did this happen for you? Yeah, great question, Kev. But let me even go back a little bit further. I'm a I'm a former collegiate Division One athlete. Uh, I started off at Texas a and but I finished at UNLV. But you know, I got my master's from TCU. I was a grad assistant coach. Uh, you know, at TCU, and I got my MBA from Washington State. So now, prior to that, I missed this. I was an NFL agent for what, 12 years with the NFL PA. I was with, wow. the, I was a one year with the NBA PA. For 10 years, I was an agent with the CFL PA, Players Association, and I'm a former member of the, of the Sports Lawyers Association. So I'm a, I'm an athlete dude. Okay. Right. Uh, my son uh, is a linebacker at SMU right now, and I have another son who's a graduate 
uh, coach. I mean, he's a graduate player at PV. He started off at UConn. So, you know, I started off coaching, okay, in high school at the world famous DeSoto High School. I was a varsity Ooh. linebacker coach there. I understand skill trainer. So having said all of that, um, at, at a certain point, I was running a construction firm, don't, doing real great. And then COVID-19 hit. But I was already, my sisters were already moving me towards being mindful and you know, learning how to use the law of attraction. And I would listen, you know, I would listen to them talk about that stuff. And I'm like, hmm, I'm interested in this. Uh, so I was learning how to use vision boards. I was learning how to, when I was at UNLV, I set the single uh, season record in tackles, but I was using something that my sister gave me. She was having me manifest everything that I wanted. And, uh -huh. you know, she was like, you keep saying this every single day and you manifest this. So I'm like, think, oh yeah, manifestation, manifesting energy. And it was working, guys. It was actually working for me. And she then turned me on to a documentary called The Secret. And after watching The Secret, I started to say, oh, okay, metaphysics. So this whole spiritual and metaphysical world is, is something that's real. And you know, using the law of attraction to, to attract anything you want, setting your intentions on things with a laser focus, I started to see these things worked. And then I had a hiatus, got married, you know, uh, became an agent, did all those things, hung out, and kind of moved further away from it. Then COVID-19 hit. Everybody was forced. And I know at least in Texas, we were shut in. So we had to sort of, you know, we couldn't do anything. But I started to gravitate towards YouTube, watching documentaries, you know, UFO, stuff like that, the universe. And I got into this whole meditation thing, uh, you know, just trying to figure out, hmm, I've been reading these books and I've been looking at these YouTube videos. I'm just telling the truth <laughs> on how to lead a body. Right. And I'm yeah. like, okay, can I do that? So I, I was trying to have an out of body experience. And I write about this in my book, Empowered by Consciousness. And what I figured out is I could, and I did. I did on a few occasions. Popped out the body on the ceiling, looking down at myself. It's like, oh, oh, whoa. And I did that through meditation, through learning how to calm my conscience, calm myself, practicing over and over and over and over to where when I'm laying down and I'm trying to induce an out of body experience, I'm sort of asleep, but I'm not because I had trained myself to have this, this, this calmness, this peace within myself. So you asked me, well, how'd you get into the mindset stuff? So once I learned how to do that, I got very curious. I'm like, what else can we do? Like, you know, I'm a football guy. I'm a coach and athlete. you know, I'm, I'm a business. I'm a, I, I mean, I was able to do this. Like, what else can we do? And that's when I started reading Dolores Cannon's books. Uh, Dolores Cannon is a world-renowned uh, quantum hypnotherapist. She's passed away, but she was able to regress her clients who would come to see her using regression therapy techniques, delving into the subconscious mind. You know, helping them with depression, helping them with anxiety, with smoking, with being overweight, um, reaching the higher self, the spirit, the higher self, God, Buddha, whatever a person's religion, religious pre preference is, however they call the person, but reaching that higher self, that spirit, and then having a conversation with it. Because you, when you put a person in trance and move them down to different brainwave states, you can actually you know, have a conversation with the higher self to ask questions for the client. Mm. And this beautiful, rich voice comes out and it starts to speak to you. And you're saying, Kevin wants to know mm. why his ankle won't heal. And Kevin, you'll move a little bit. Kevin understands that he needs to lose. Um, the weight in the ankle will 
So you start speaking, and once the actual session is over with, and I play the tape and I video, I video all my sessions, people are like, whoa, who is that talking? So this connection with the higher self and the subconscious mind, I already knew because I'm a clinical hypnotherapist as well, and I'm a quantum hypnotherapist. So I know that I can get you to stop smoking, get you to right. lose weight, and get you to do things by uh, sending subliminal messages to the conscience and reprogramming the mind, creating new neural pathways in the mind. This is scientifically proven. This is not woo-woo, but this is proven that um, if you move a person from the alpha to the theta brainwave state, the state of concentration, the state of relaxing, mm. and if you go into a deep theta brainwave state, then I start to make suggestions to you over and over. You will run a 4-4. You will run a full four forty. You will prepare for it. You will lose the weight necessary. You have to have a strong uh, abs. You have to have a, your back needs to be stronger. The steps need to be ten steps instead of thirteen steps. So I start to program and and continue to move this information into the subconscious mind while the patient is in the theta brainwave state. So I knew all of this already just from you know, being certified at both of these modalities. Right. And just the overall uh, exploration I was doing when I was writing this book about consciousness and what it is, I started to say, well, you know what? The subconscious mind is strong. I can change people. Yes, I sir. can actually uh, teach a person, not teach, I can actually convince a person to make uh, 250 phone calls a week if they were a sales rep versus 75 or 25 calls a week right. using hypnosis. And I, and I parlayed that into mindset training and helping people, um, you know, reach whatever goal they want to reach. So Kev, that's how I got into mindset training is from my studies in quantum hypnosis in clinical hypnosis. And I, I know we can go on a different tangent now. I know you guys are listening to me like, what you did? You no, not me. really. Believe me. No, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm following. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I got books about it. So, yeah, and I was going to ask. Well, I've you done it. I've done psychedelics, yeah. uh, the albino strand. Uh, I've, I've, I've traveled and I've had a chance to come face to face with my human, with the human ego, with my ego, which was terrible. Be Here Now is a book written by Ram Das, and it talks about the human ego and the death of the human ego. And uh, Dr. Bob Monroe, uh, Far Journeys, you know, he, he has three a three book series on astral travel. I'm an energy healer, level three galactic energy healer. So I can use different patterns to heal trauma, depression. So I can, there's a lot of different ways you can heal. And when you package all of these modalities together, you can move them into a business practice and you can still affect the mind. You can still find the blockages on why this athlete cannot learn these plays. He's my quarterback. I can fine tune a quarterback just using sports hypnosis because I, I do sports hypnosis. Right. And j just by understanding what are the issues and I get those and I get them, I'll get them all written down. It takes about eight to 12 sessions to change a habit. I can change any habit on a person in about eight to 12 sessions if they want. Because fellas, when I reprogram the subconscious, the software is rewritten in their different neural pathways created. And this is just right. not me talking, it's scientifically proven. The only way you will revert back and do something different is that if you, change and rewrite the software because this brain is only a hard drive and it's right. software inside of the brain so uh i know that's a deep dive care but yeah that's how i got that's how i moved my the modalities into business practices because i had to figure out how to monetize you know you can't do this stuff and read these books and figure and figure you're gonna um <laughs> make a living so i had right. to move that into mindset coaching and i use a combination of hypnosis in mindset uh, coaching principles um, to help affect uh, the subconscious mind and to steer 
uh, and program the mind wherever the client desires it to be and whatever goal they want to achieve. I, I, I want to interject and say this. And D.A., I don't know if you're a baseball guy, Jason, um, but D.A. remembers. Remember Mackie Sasser and I think Rick Ankiel? Yeah. Mackie Sasser couldn't throw. He was a former Met. He was a Tiger in a Met, and he couldn't throw back to the pitcher. You know how you're a catcher and you throw, and I used to catch in high school. And, you know, you get the ball, the pitcher pitches you the ball, and you throw back. He had some kind of mental block where it was impossible for him to throw to the pitcher, back back to the pitcher, where they they had to move his position. Same thing, I think, with Rick Ankill. Am I right? Um, With the car. was a a pitcher, and they had to move him to the outfield because he could no longer pitch. And Steve Satch couldn't throw the ball from second base to first base. Mm-hmm. Ever. So there, there were, like you said, there were hurdles. Someone had to either, you know, figure out a way, you know, like you said, I guess, you know, speak to them, figure out what's going on and then find a way uh, to, to work around it, to, to, to get them over that hurdle or get them past it to where they need to go. My question to you is how would you handle somebody that was would have some kind of mental block like that or have you handled somebody like that? Yeah, I would I would really have them enhance um, their concentration before practice or before they competed, you know, and you can use some of those same techniques. I mean, you know, I, I don't have one hundred and fifty techniques. And if you're being taught a whole lot of stuff by somebody, run from them. But <laughs> by learning, you know what I mean? But, right. but by learning to for him, it would I would I would for him having that sort of blockage. If he came to see me, the first thing I would be like, I would ask him, tell me exactly what's going on. I don't know. And, you know, it, at a certain point in the game, I'm getting ready to pitch. I just can't locate anymore. It was, pain, it was painful to watch. And they had to go to the outfield. It really was. And, right, and, and my thing is, okay, what else is going on in your life? Because when you think about it, you have to treat them not be, you can't throw the ball. You, you're not being able to do, no, you got to treat them like regular people. What else is going on in your life? And once I can figure out what is going on in the life, and he's already come to me because he just can't take this ridicule anymore, then he's open to working with me because we, we back this thing back a little bit. The player has to be open to working through the issue, you have to be open to quitting alcohol, smoking. And when you say enough is enough, then the subconscious opens up and it is trusting. So you have to trust. So he comes to me and I figure out exactly what it is. And I said, okay, now let's remove this blockage. I would use a, a, a hypnosis technique. I would use quantum hypnosis. I would pass life, regress him. And I would find out when this, when did this anxiety or nervousness start, which lifetime. And my technique's a little bit different from sports psychology. However, I arrive at the same conclusion. Once I figured out which lifetime uh, these issues started to happen, then I would bring clarity to the situation by having a conversation with his higher self. And once I was able to do, once I was able to do that. And we bring this issue uh, issue to the forefront, to the current lifetime, then we can start to remove those blockages. And I would use energy healing. I would use different positive self-talk techniques. I would have him use different manifestations. I am a complete player. Right. I don't fracture under pressure. I I have the utmost uh, uh, attention and focus when I'm competing professionally over and over and over, now we're reprogramming the mind, do hypnosis sessions with him to reprogram the mind into this solid performer. And once we were able to reprogram the mind and use all the techniques necessary to figure out where is this blockage, why is he um, you know, having these lapses, then I would teach him how to self-sustain. I teach him how to breathe. I teach him small techniques on meditation. Once you are meditating, uh, 
Kevin, the noise will come in from Bills, uh, the argument you had with your brother. Uh, you know, DA wants to talk all the time. You guys do the show, and that's Bobby. All that stuff comes in, but let it be. Let it be because that releases stress. The noise that you hear when you meditate, it's okay because it will fade away. And then I would teach this, this young man how to use mantras to calm the mind. Maybe it's, uh, maybe the mantra is love and peace, love and peace, love and peace. You say these over and over and over to the mind is calm. And then you help the young man move his, his inner being down slowly. Now, this is not a one day fix. This is an everyday fix. Now, his confidence, his clarity, his focus is way different. He's been using meditation. I'm sorry. He's been using hypnosis sessions that have been targeting one area to reprogram his mind. We've done some past life regression and we found out where the blockages were when he was a little boy. He was always told that you get nervous too easy. Every time I put you over here, you act like you scared. I had to learn that. I was tough, hard with my sons. And so I learned you can put blockages in people. And you tell them stuff over and over and over. And once we remove that, and, and, and now the confidence is there, and all those techniques I mentioned, then you have a, a guy who's got his confidence back, just like Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, at certain moments in big games, it just something happens. 200%. Something happens. It's mental, guys. Dak, we know Dak, he 4,500, 4, 5,000 yards a year, 28 touchdowns, 30 touchdowns. He gonna get, he's going to give you that. It's mental. And I know he's probably working with a, a, a sports psychologist. They got plenty of money to do that. A lot of these guys are. But I subscribe, and I am saying that sports psychology is awesome. But I also think there's a holistic approach that should be attached to it so that the players can really, really delve into themselves and find out who they really are and, and, and have this uh, ability to be safe. A safe so another step. You say that you see that you, you see it as being an, another step to the psychiatrist, um, the sports, sports psychologist, excuse me, um, to make it a more holistic uh, approach to the face. Yeah, I do, DA. I really do. And, and that's what the mental game plan, that, that's what uh, my book is about. It's about other uh, alternate techniques that you can infuse into your daily routine while you're competing, while you're practicing, when you're injured. Uh, coaches can use the techniques to, I mean, you can reduce the transfer portal if a player understands that there's more to you than X's and O's and that you actually help this guy develop himself. And I don't want these guys to become Buddhas or, you know, or woo-woo guys. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just simply saying that there are some strategies that you can use um, helping the player set goals, uh, helping the player visualize every day in film study. A small technique that you're introducing. Hey, hey, uh, Hey, D.A., visualize yourself making that play. You, you messed up on that play three times. Next time, I'm going to sit you down. But I want you to start to visualize. And then after that, you know, set the goals for me. And I want you to, you know, and, and when I get ready to put you in tomorrow at practice, breathe. And then go back and remember your responsibilities. If we integrate these techniques, if we integrate different ways that the player says man we do some cool stuff at the university of michigan wow I mean, our coach teaches us really how to uh hone in on ourselves and get out get out of our own way uh we can start to see the transfer portal change because you can reach the kids that are thinking about transferring they have a clear conversation with you instead of, instead of dodging you and just hopping in the portal you may have a chance to have a clear conversation for a coach, where they are. Yeah. you know, before a coach, you may not be so doggy. I don't care if he leaves or not, because they are in need of work as well. Uh, 100%. They are cutthroat as well. 100%. 100%. I, I was going to ask you about 
this other thing, your professional opinion. I, mm-hmm. I know sports um, franchises, the the top, you know, the you know the the major four, um, well, major five. I'll put in soccer too. How many of a percentage, in your professional p- opinion, utilize this, utilize this sports psychology, and then do any of them tap on your holistic approach to it? Do you know, or could you put a number on it, or you know? Um. A very low percentage, I would say. Um, and people are afraid of this, the holistic portion of it, unless it's worded right, because it becomes woo-woo. It's not PhD. It's not psychology. It's because we're in the, we're, this is the Western culture. It's, 100%. it's capitalism. It's, you know, you got to get a certification for this. You got to pay to go uh, 200 grand to go to New York uh, institution. Say it again, Jason. You know? <laughs> In the, uh, the the Eastern culture, it's more about being within. It's more about love. It's more about um, the, the the world around you. You know, so I would have to mask what I the techniques I use into, and I would have to make it sound like when I say they, y'all know who I'm talking about. They yeah. want it to sound, and but absolutely, I don't think a lot of them are using it. But I, I had an interesting interview the other day. With a with a gentleman, uh, Doctor Eddie. He, that's what he goes by. He's a sports uh, psychologist. He's talking to me, and he's he's one. He's telling me about cognitive reframing and how you you know use the cognitive uh, when you reframe the mind and you build them up this way. He's only talking about visualization. Yeah, I mean, okay, <laughs> you know, and which I think is a wonderful technique. But um, and, you know, you have to involve you know identify. Uh, this involves identifying the negative and the self-defeating thoughts and, and uh, consciously replacing them with uh, positive thoughts. Yeah, that's, yeah, you, uh, you know, negativity, if you think <laughs> it, that's what would happen. And if you think positive, that's what would happen. Don't y'all have a friend who's always, I'm like, man, he's my boy. Yeah, he but. Change that vibration. His right. vibration's <laughs> off. His whole vibration's off. Yeah. Your, your yeah. vibration and frequency. I ain't know he's going to have that conversation, but frequency and vibration is Huge with athletes. You can't be this guy that don't, I don't talk to no, I don't talk to nobody. I'm just in here doing my bro, relax. There's a blockage there. The introvert stuff, okay, we get it. Some people are quiet, but it's usually a reason why you're just to yourself. Let's open up. You don't have to be everybody's friend, but soften the approach so that people can reach you when we need to reach you. Yes. But but Kevin, I, I think that it's a small amount. Um, and I think some of the uh, sports psychologists out there, they do both. They would never tell anybody. They'll just mix it in and they'll try mm. to, well, let's mix some mindfulness techniques. Well, what is that? And then, you know, us, we'll, whatever they say, we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll do. You know, so right. it needs to be more of us uh, in this. Uh, I'm out here. Um, and when I make phone calls, you know, uh, where did you study at? This is something that God gave me. And I'm certified, but, you know, there's no PhD behind this. Um, these are modalities, spiritual modalities that um, that are working with, with the guise of hypnosis and with proven stra- uh, techniques that have been used by hypnotherapists to rewire the mind. I just happen to be a athlete a businessman in the athletic realm, a skilled trainer at one point, and a coach. So I understand how to move these uh, philosophies and techniques uh, and to build mental resilience in our young men. Um, but um, very little, Kevin, uh, to say the least. Gotcha. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dick. I said it definitely sounds like from your vantage point, you you sure enough can look at the whole situation to see that two and two still does equal four. It's just kind of how you got to package the four because results, you know, are, are going to, you know, you're going to have the same results as these guys, you know, because you know what you're doing, you know, and because you were an athlete, you can see like, oh, yeah, th- these are the connection points right here. See, this is what you're missing, right? So, yeah, this guy's he's this type of athlete. He's six foot five. Runs a four one. This this he gets on the field and he you know he doesn't do what he's supposed to do. Well, this is why. 
Let me sit down and talk to him for a little bit and I can figure it out. And I think you're in the perfect vantage point to, you know, take advantage and not say that in a bad way. I mean, in the way to help a lot of athletes, man, because I, I know this happens. I've seen it happen. So for a lot of guys and forget about the high level guys like you. I mean, just on the high school level, guys get on the field and those blockages, man, they'll they'll come get a guy, you know, on the JV team. You know, the reason he never makes a divorce is because there's a blockage somewhere and, and uh -huh. someone never talked to him, you know. And you know what they saying? Uh, get his get his blank, blank, blank out of here. I ain't got time for no attitude. Well, he can't help it. He can't he can't help it. And then again, you don't expect coaches to be therapists, but that's why you have a sports psychologist. So you have a, a, a mental a performance coach uh, there. Uh, that's a part of your program that can that can help reshape a young man and, and 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 understand where these issues are so that you can get this young man help. Mental illness is closely related to all of this, you know, and, you know, mentally ill, man, is something that, you know, we'll go get nails done. We'll go get rims shined up. We'll go, and, you know, get shoes, but we're not going nowhere to talk to nobody to work on it, to get this fixed or to work on our mind. We're not doing that. Said again, and just you're right. We're just not conditioned to do that, but they are. That's why they are attached to UCLA, and that's why they're attached to Washington State and, and all the Duke. They have these people there <laughs> because they do the research, they do the study, and we don't look at it that way. We're just fast. We can jump, we can run. But if we had the mental side of it down, we are now better at looking at business opportunities. We're now looking at social media in more of a broad fashion. We can, we can see clear. Meditation helps you with uh, reduced blood pressure, helps you gain clarity. It, it really, really changes your whole scope on how you see the world. Imagine if you were a super powered athlete. And I think, Kev, you mentioned other any um, psychology, I'm sorry, uh, uh, sports psychology uh, guys out there that maybe integrate some of this, but you know, not a lot of them, but we know that some of the pros are. Think about what LeBron says all the time. He throws it in your face. You know, LeBron, you got to back to back. You want to be ready? Well, I'm not too much worried about the body as long as I get my mind right. If I get my mind right, you know, everything else falls into place. True. LeBron is one of the only guys out there. Kobe was one of the only guys out there. They had mindset coaches. Kevin Durant, I was doing some research. At 13 years old, Kevin Durant had a mindset coach. It's certain guys that had figured it out. Tom Brady, mindset training. Uh, Russell Wilson, they were talking about how Sean Payton was berating Russell on the sideline, and Russell was just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, he had he had a lot of what's what's that what's that word I like to use? Um, gosh, uh, I can't think of it right now. But he had a lot of patience with um, Coach Payton. Um, a lot of patience with Coach Payton, Coach Payton. But one of the color commentators said when he was berating him, one of the commentators said, "That's kudos to Russell Wilson. He's been known to work with the mindset coach down at IMG Academy." Mm. So at some point, Russell had had mindset training on anxiety, pressure, uh, uh, adversity, when people are all in your face, the way you respond, the way you analyze the noise coming right at you. Everybody can't do what Russell did. I just made him an example. No, uh, no. Guys out there that are doing this, Kev. <laughs> you believe no. For sure. And he had yeah. his energy in the right place. It, hey, yeah. DA, energy. Your energy means everything. That's why if you practice these uh, uh, steps, you practice visualization, you practice mindfulness, you practice positive talk, you you run away from negative uh, self-talk. Um, you have someone who's working with you with these pressure points on what success looks like. Average may be great. We can't tell uh, uh, some athletes, man, you just average. Average may be great to him, but let's help him define the paradigm 
on what, you know, what the paradigm is, the paradigm, the construct is saying this is great. And this construct, this football that you're playing, this this volleyball, this basketball, the construct is saying this is average. So know where the benchmarks are. But average young man is absolutely okay if you're comfortable with that. So we remove this title from them being an athlete and you work with them as people. And that's when they open up. And that's when you can get them to vividly imagine themselves performing at their best under pressure. The mental practice really helps them prepare the brain um, for the performance, making the right call, making the right shot, making the right pass, you know, uh, recognizing it's going to be a slider. It's not a curveball. It's a slider. Seeing it move slowly because you trained the body to see. To, 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 to be calm, and here it comes, and bam, you hit it. It's the same type of trainer that the golfers get, and they get a ton of it. That, uh, game, that game is totally mental. And I tell yes. you what, Jason, something now that kept going, I'm sorry, I apologize, but, uh, yeah. but what you're saying, uh, the, the the mental focus and the, the the attitude and the energy, like you say, it's it's great to learn it, but where, you know, your importance is, is so critical, man, is that you keep, you don't let dudes fall, right? So right. once they're with you, you're going to say, hey, hey, you want this today? You you make sure, remember to say it, because every we as human beings don't always remember to say, hey, man, I'm going to do my best today. Whatever that is, I'm going to do my best today. I'm going to, you know, always tell Cap, I said, no one goes to work. You know, and I said it because people working for me, whatever. But it's just an affirmation to man that listen, I know you're not trying to mess up. Sometimes things get messed up, but you're not trying to mess up. But what you do, Jason, man, like man, you are you're the guy that would constantly put in hey, hey D. <laughs> hey D. Hey, hey, it's it's a long arm, long arm. All right. So you you kind of understand what you're doing and what you're trying to do. Because I don't think that most of us are not strong enough to do it every day just yet, right? We need to get there. So we need to get and, there. And, and thus, mental performance coaching, mental training is needed, not just for the athlete, but for the businessman, um, you know, for the nurse, uh, for the sales rep, for the marketing director. That's why the top, top corporate executives, they have coaches. But they'll never tell you that. They'll never let you know what they do to say, uh, to stay uh, wealthy, rich people. They have spiritual advisors. They have coaches. They have people who work on their mental. Because when they get at that level, everybody has them. You know, and it's, and it's not. And this is why. Oh, what's my guy name that um, Tony? Um, uh, I like him, too. Uh, the, the white boy, Tony. Uh, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a bad brother. I mean, he's a bad white guy. I call him a brother. But Tony Robbins is the ultimate coach motivator, mental trainer, you know, and he may use some different strategies, but Tony is in demand. It's one million dollars to even see Tony, number one, for him to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Number two, he's booked out four years, five years, you know. So, you know, the the wealthy, the, 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 the more prepared person, um, you know, the super, super, um, brilliant and smart, they're working with people behind the scenes. And athletes in particular, this is what we're talking about, and coaches can benefit because uh, having this scrawl on your face and being known as the tough guy and lying to guys and, and just, you know, being this uh, scowl of a coach, it's not cool. You think it is. You know, everybody thought it was cool to – Come on, we gotta put you know, give you I mean, yeah, we all grew up with tough coaching. But I'm here to say that tough coaching is necessary, along with strategies for helping our young men understand that yeah, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna coach you hard, but I'm also gonna give you techniques to so that your mental um is at the same level as the coaching I'm giving you. We just need to balance it. For a lot of our young men and a lot of our young women, and they're getting this more and more 
um, every day, I'm just amplifying it even more. And that's why I decided to write the book. Nah, that's nah, that's definitely a dope thing. And the word I was looking for is the emotional intelligence. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, EQ. And they call emotional intelligence, they they call it EQ. Yeah. And here are some with emotional intelligence. Here are a few tips on how you can build your emotional intelligence. If your spouse is starting to get on your nerves and you have had a quick temper, a quick mouth, the first time she says something that you feel it coming, you're going to respond. Take three seconds and listen to the furthest thing away from you. One, two, three. You listen to the furthest thing away from you. And then three more seconds and listen to the closest thing near you. And this helps regulate your emotions. And now you can respond in a few minutes. In, you know, in about five seconds, you can respond to her. Ooh, we'll take about six seconds. Take about take about five or six seconds. So that is one of one of many techniques uh, with emotional intelligence. You know, and I've took I've taken some emotional intelligence courses. That's why I, that's how I knew to roll it off my tongue. <laughs> there are a lot of small techniques you can use in emotional intelligence to regulate the emotions to uh, remove this tough guy, this quick guy, this person who's quick to give you a piece of my mind. Mindfulness helps too. Meditation helps too. Positive thinking helps too. And removing all these negative thoughts and limited thinking, and 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 this um, um, this mindset that's stagnant, you know, uh, and move and moving towards more of a growth mindset, a mindset that allows you to be open to new possibilities, and be open to new ideas, and and uh, open to expand your consciousness and your thought process. And, you know, the power of mental training lies really in the ability to prepare our athletes um, for the, the demanding, um, you know, uh, practices and for the demanding uh, media. And when you can prepare these guys, it really, really enables them to perform at their highest level. Not that there won't be mistakes. But they will minimize their uh, their mistakes, especially under pressure. Sounds like you, man, you can. You're lengthening careers. I mean, like, because if you can show guys how to deal with the the off and on, you know, camera before and after the game, those are the guys that get to do the you know NFL Network or this or that because they've shown through a personality based on that coaching that will help them to you know lengthen their careers. Right, because you know, a lot of times it's a perception of folks um, can kind of doom you, you know, because you may not be putting out the right perception, and you're not doing anything wrong. You don't think you are, at least. But that coaching, like you say, that that performance coaching, and not just in sports, but in life, it looks like it'll help a whole bunch, you know. And yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm like right now, I'm putting together a speaking tour of 2025, and I'm approaching a lot of the top. Uh, uh, sports apparel companies uh, mm. said, let's create a program, a mental mm. training gym. Uh, let's create uh, this speaking tour that talks to young men and, uh, and young women um, about mindfulness, about cognitive reframing, as uh, a sports psychologist would say, um, you know, and incorporate all this into a, a, a seminar for these young people to come out and to hear there are different techniques you can use to optimize your performance. So I'm targeting a few of these companies right now. I'm putting together the proposal and, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. You'll be yeah. fine. Nah, yeah, you'll definitely be fine. And definitely blessings is coming your way for that. Jason, uh, I just need one favor. I, yeah. I we cannot do this in one take. I, we're going to have to know. <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> you said it. You said I'm gonna ask my last question. We're gonna elaborate on that, and I'm we're gonna have you back for part two. But right. he did say it. <laughs> he did say it. Uh, developing mental toughness and resilience is essential uh, to your guidance to athletes. Could you explain the key components of mental toughness um, that athletes should develop, and how can coaches support this development? I'll just say this before you you dive into that question. Resilience is like my favorite word. 
the ability to just bounce back. And I tell people in my vocation, you have to have the, the ability to bounce back. And I just love the word resilience, man. That's it. You just have to if, correct me if I'm wrong. Resilience, you have to build upon right. it, right? You ain't born with it. You got to build it. And right. so I'll let you elaborate on that last question. But go ahead, Jason. Well, um, you know, basically, you know, help them to um, learn how to be resilient. And learning how to be resilient requires you to, let's just say, uh, start to build these narratives around all the things that bother you or all the things that that's, that seem to hinder you from being the best you can be. Uh, help them develop a set of go-to affirmations that resonates with them uh, over the things that, 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 that they're having problems with if it's you know, some kind of technique or if it's some sort of, um, um, you know, uh, uh, error they keep making uh, in, 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 the, in the bottom of the third. You know, you want to be able to um, use these abilities and use these um, I am's uh, so that the player can hone in and exactly prepare for what they want. For example, I am prepared. I'm ready to succeed. Uh, I am resilient. Uh, I can't handle any challenges that come my way. Um, so I would say resiliency um, can be taught by using positive self-talk. And a coach can help a player with positive self-talk or a mindset coach or a sports psychologist. Positive self-talk on all the things that you're having problems with that you cannot do. And I would also incorporate um, Visualization. I would have my guys visualizing like crazy. It would be something they would pull out of their back pocket like they was looking looking at their cell phone or, you know, using it like that. You can do that on the go. You can literally think in your mind every single thing that you want to get done in basketball practice. And right before the game, and you guys play ball at some level. When they when the head coach brings someone in and everybody's laying on the floor in the gym, yep. he's saying, "Imagine yourself scoring a touchdown. Imagine you get the game winning shot, and then you play the next day." And we thought it was crazy, but this was this guy was helping us visualize. So I, I would also have goal setting. I would you know make sure that the goals were defined and that they were clear. Okay, and the goal your goals have to be specific. And you have to make them achievable because when you set goals that are too um, lofty, they're not really going to be, uh, you're not really going to meet them. So don't set goals that are not clear and achievable and, and, and set goals that uh, and steer your athletes. And if you're a coach, make them set realistic goals so that they can match their training to the goal and their performance will increase. If you know you are four six, you're not running a four four by right. the end of spring. It's not gonna happen. That's what two tenths of a second. That's a lot. <laughs> so, but if you can get a good strategy on how you set specific, measurable goals, and then sometimes these kids are set goals and they don't know how to measure them. You have to do the work. Now, what has to happen when I set this goal? Okay, I, have, I need to work out. Three times a week doing this, I had to do, I have to shoot 50 shots from the left key or, or from the elbow. Um, so you have to match things up when you are setting the goals um, and um, to be effective. So, you know, I would say um, um, also motivation. You know, what does motivation look like to you? And how are you motivated? You know what I mean? What, what, you know, what, you know, coming, playing ball and being talented, you know, or being a guy that doesn't have all the talent, you know, what are the triggers? You know, properly motivating the athlete is one of the things that could be a blockage there, or it could be something that, that they have that can prepare them to the next level. You just have to show them how to move this motivation in the right areas. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're giving the athlete, you know, solid milestones uh, 
so that they can strive for um, greatness. You know, when you're properly motivating, properly motivating is now we're going to go out here. We're going to kick that. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's a rah-rah speech. But the proper motivation is remember everything that you've done this week. And remember the patience it takes when you're reading the second level of the defense. And I want you to be motivated. And I want you to breathe. And I want you to make the right throw. So we can apply different types of motivation in the training. We can apply different types of motivation before the competition. There's just so many different uh, uh, techniques. There's so many different strategies that strategies that you can use. Everyone's different, but all of it works the same. And you know, you know, it's just it's it's, it's so much. I get lost in what I'm what I'm trying to uh, you know give to the audience. But I just think that there's a huge uh, opportunity for athletes to start utilizing sports hypnosis. Start uh, getting yourself in a relaxed place so that you can execute at a high level. Start setting achievable, smart goals and define exactly what you want. And the biggest thing that we didn't spend a lot of time on tonight, guys, is self-realization. If you don't realize you are an alcoholic, if you don't realize you are deficient uh, with you know, uh, kick step. If you're offensive tackle and you get that left, left uh, that kick step, it's just not. You have to realize I need help, and I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go find it. And once a person who realizes and can self-realize, you know what? I I scream at my mom, and I know I do. I think I, I need to go get some help. I can tell my coach, can he get me with somebody? I know I'm doing this. And I'm I'm being I'm, I'm just making it broad, but self realization in an athlete is very important because when you realize where the deficiency are deficiencies are, we can clean that up, and, or you know whoever you're working with can clean that up, and you can really make strides uh, uh, towards being uh, exactly what you want to be and increasing your performance. Jason, man, listen, uh, what, what's the name of the book again? Please. And, and the name of the book is uh, called The Mental Game Plan. And you can go to www.jasonmedlock.com backslash The Mental Game Plan. I have an audio version and I have a, uh ebook version. It's only eight bucks. So it's not meant to uh, to make uh, uh, to get rich off, but it's meant to for for young men, young women, pro athletes, coaches, whoever to really have some actionable strategies. But you don't have to go pay twenty thousand dollars for <laughs> right pay them because they're at Ohio State with you. <laughs> you don't have to do you know, or you making all this money, and all of a sudden you think you got to pay twenty grand to somebody to tell you to breathe and to right. relax and close your eyes. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. But it's the mental game plan. Smart. And I have a mindset coaching program. I have a mindset boot camp. And all of these techniques I use, guys, come from my best-selling book, Empowered by Consciousness. And I've tried all this stuff. I've been a, a Division One athlete at the highest level. I've set school records. I've been a sports agent for 10-plus uh, years uh, in three different leagues. Um, so I understand this, and, I, and, and I've changed how I handle my sons. I've changed. I was that grunt dad you know but i work on their mind and they like dad what, what's what you doing i mean what's different i said i missed it yeah i, I missed it and i'm telling you guys i missed it and, and we gotta do this again like next week because yeah. brother first off i know some high school coaches that need to, to to get with you um and that i missed it part is so big that a lot of dads especially Missing yeah. and, and they could be crushing success by throwing hurdles in their kids' way and not knowing that they're throwing hurdles in their way. So the coaching part of this is is really fascinating to me, and I, I want to know how you how you implement that with them because I know oh, yeah. they're so important um, as far as the coaches are concerned um, with these youngsters and, and getting them involved and, and helping to, like you said, smart goals, good goals. You know, because kids yes. don't know what a good goal is. 
kids want the Bentley. Well, I want the Bentley. You know, that's what they want. They don't. They're not, they're not really sure what a smart goal is for football for that season. You know, like what's your goal for this season? You know, I remember my sons like their best coaches in football. Like they're like, okay, what do you want to happen by next season? What do you want to happen by the end of this year? Right. Scott. I like what you did. I, I, like, I like what you just did. You 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 just assigned a timeline to the goal to yeah. ensure that there's some kind of sense of urgency. I, I like what you just said. I'm a, I'm a project manager by trade, so that's what I do for a living. So I'm a I, PMP. I, oh, yeah, you me too. Why I'm, yeah, not me in the, too. why I'm not in the field? Yeah, me me too. So I, everything <laughs> has everything has a date, time. You know. Yep. Yeah, everything. So that's that's kind of the way I, I do everything in life. So. um and it makes it simpler for me. But again, sir, I think Jason, man. Jason absolutely. we we absolutely gonna have to do. We are gonna do part two real soon. Uh, we'll talk off air and see how we can do this, man. But this has been great. Uh, like like I said before, you you said it. We'll probably be talking a few times, and we couldn't do this in a, a hour and change. There's no way. There's. No I got way. a book for you. I got a book for you. Okay, we will definitely get together. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Listen, those that's watching on YouTube or listening on the podcast, man, make sure you look out for part two. It should be right after, of course, um, part one. And Jason, thank you, my friend. Uh, he's a friend of the show now. Absolutely. And we thank you for your words of wisdom and stuff like that. But make sure you look out for part two, man. Hey, on behalf of myself, I'm Kevin O'Warren, your host and moderator for the DA Dorian Albritton and our special guest tonight, Mr. Jason Metlock, man, this is the Sports Chasers Podcast. Y'all be good. Y'all be great. Hey, we see y'all the next go around. Peace. That's a wrap for today's episode of the Sports Chasers Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms and connect with us on all social media channels for exclusive content and updates. We'd also love for you to join the conversation, share your thoughts, and become part of the Sports Chasers community. And remember to tune in next time for some more real sports talk. Until then, stay frosty.